स्टूडेंट्स टूडे वी लर्न दैट वॉट इज सेंट्रिकल पम्प एज वेल एज वी वी अंडरस्टैंड द वर्किंग प्रिंसिपल ऑफ सेंट्रिकल पम्प एज वेल एज वी विल नो दैट वॉट इज द मेनोमेट्रिक हैड एंड स्टेटिक हैड इन रिगार्ड्स ऑफ सेंट्रिकल पम्प रिमेम्बर दिस थिंग फॉर अंडरस्टैंडिंग दिस लेक्चर यू मस्ट हैव द नॉलेज ऑफ बर्नावली थ्रोम एंड द कंसेप्ट ऑफ हैड ऑफ अ फ्लोइंग फ्लूड इन योर माइंड बिकॉज इट इज द प्री रिक्विसिट फॉर अंडरस्टैंडिंग दिस लेक्चर In case you don't know about this Bernoulli theorem and head, then you must watch my another lecture, which is devoted to Bernoulli theorem and head. In the same channel, you will find. Now remember this thing that centrifugal pump is a device which is used to lift water or any other liquid from lower head to higher head. Okay, generally the centrifugal pump is used for lifting water from lower head to higher head. Okay. Second thing is it is commonly used device in industries as well as for household purpose. one common example of use of centrifugal pump in household purpose is the submerged pump of your desert cooler in desert cooler you would have find that one pump is there which is submerged inside the the tank of desert cooler which contains the water so the job of this pump is to suck the water from that tank and ultimately lift it to the corresponding point from where it falls over the pads of the desert cooler okay it is also used for common household purpose that is to lift the water from underground tank to the overhead tank of the house for that purpose also centrifugal pump is commonly used now we will understand the working of centrifugal pump okay the working of centrifugal pump can be understood by the help of daily like example that is tumbler containing water okay so take a tumbler put some water in it and by the help of a spoon try to stir the water rotate it in a particular direction what you will find that water is trying to move toward the inner peripheral surface of this tumbler can you tell the reason the reason is simple to understand that whenever any body rotates about some axis then it exerts a centrifugal force on that body due to that centrifugal force the body tries to move in radial direction away from the axis of rotation so same thing is happening with the water content over here that when water is rotated by the help of a spoon then due to that rotation it develops a centrifugal force on the water content due to this thing it is moving in radial direction and trying to stick with the inner peripheral surface of this tumbler okay so same thing happens in centrifugal pump there is a casing this brown colored entity is the casing and there is a impeller in it there is an impeller in it okay and impeller rotates inside the casing about some axis the impeller is connected to some shaft okay and the rotary power supplied to this impeller by the help of some electric motor generally an electric motor is used to run the impeller of centrifugal pump okay now what happens that this is the impeller and these are the vanes of impeller you can see these are the three vanes of impeller okay so when water enters inside the casing and impeller is rotating in the case the centrifugal pump is working then when water enters inside the casing and impeller is rotating then water content also starts rotating with the impeller vanes okay because this impeller vanes are forcing the water to rotate due to this thing what happens centrifugal force is developed in the water content so water tries to move toward the inner peripheral surface of this casing okay so ultimately over the inner peripheral surface high pressure water is collected okay once again when water rotates with the impeller then it develops a centrifugal force on that water content so it starts moving in radial direction toward the inner peripheral surface of this casing so over there high pressure water is collected okay so from a suitable point due to that pressure it goes out you can see this is the discharge point from here the water exits and through a delivery pipe it ultimately reaches the destination so this is how the pressure of water is raised by the help of this impeller the impeller develops centrifugal force on the water content due to that centrifugal force the water moves toward the inner peripheral surface over there high pressure water starts accumulating and due to this thing it starts going out due to that pressure it starts going out from the corresponding exit and through the delivery pipe it reaches the destination so this is how the centrifugal pump works now how water enters inside the casing it is by the help of suction pipe okay this is the point of suction from where so you can see this is a pipe this is a portion of suction pipe okay so water travels through this suction pipe and ultimately reaches to this impeller okay this is the end of suction pipe where ultimately water will go and meet the rotating impeller okay this point where ultimately water emanates out from this suction pipe and meets the impeller vanes this exit is called as i okay i so i is the place 
from where the water enters the casing of centrifugal pump okay and this is the exit of the pump from where water exits and this green green colored entity is the portion of delivery pipe of the centrifugal pump because water ultimately travels through the delivery pipe and reaches the destination okay this is an another view of centrifugal pump okay in case you are watching this pump from right to left then you will get this view however this diagram is indicative diagram of left hand side view okay so you can see that this is the impeller which rotates about its axis or shaft okay and this is the suction pipe okay now suppose this is the source from where water is to be lifted up and ultimately has to reach to its destination over some top level okay now suction pipe one end of suction pipe is dipping inside the source from where water is to be pulled okay so over there a strainer is connected to the suction pipe now what is the job of this strainer this strainer is acting as a sort of sieve okay because suppose this is the water reservoir so water reservoir can be contaminated with debris and dirt and other big particulate matters so those must be screened off first before reaching this casing so what happens this strainer contains a sieve type of arrangement so it filters away any particulate matter or debris or any dirt so that it may not get inside the casing of the pump because it can damage the peripherals of the centrifugal pump so ultimately water lifts up from this reservoir from this source and ultimately through the eye it meets the rotating impeller okay now how water automatically lifts up and reaches this uh, impeller vanes it is very simple to understand that this impeller vane is throwing the water the water is thrown due to centrifugal force toward the inner peripheral surface of this casing so over there high pressure water is collected and ultimately it goes out from the system due to that pressure from some corresponding exit due to that pressure it goes out from the system so continuously when water is going out it, it is creating a void inside okay due to that void a vacuum is created due to that vacuum the water is pulled through this suction pipe to the impeller that's it and it is a steady process steadily the water is thrown away moving through this uh, delivery pipe and reaching the destination steadily a void is created inside and due to that void more and more water is entering through this suction pipe and ultimately through this eye and meeting this impeller vanes mechanism okay now remember this thing that the space left inside the casing other than this region in which this impeller is rotating is called as volute so technically we can say that when the water content is rotating with this impeller then water is actually thrown to the volute of this centrifugal pump so over the volute high pressure water is accumulated due to that high pressure it is going out from corresponding exit and moving towards the destination okay now this is the source okay this is the source suppose this is a tank of water this is the top surface of the water content inside the tank so the distance between the center of impeller and this top surface of water is called as suction head can be denoted by hs okay similarly water is ultimately coming out from the delivery end through this delivery pipe ultimately water is coming out from the very exit of this delivery pipe so from that point where the water is exiting to the center of the impeller that distance is called as delivery head okay got it so this is suction head and this is delivery head okay now remember this thing that the sum of suction head and delivery head is called as static head of centrifugal pump okay now in case i ask you that total how much work the centrifugal pump has to do so that this job can be accomplished okay water is entering through this strainer reaching the impeller and ultimately exiting from this exit end of delivery pipe with velocity v because when it will exit it has some velocity with it okay so how much total amount of work the pump has to do so that this job can be accomplished it is very simple to understand see when water is traveling through this suction pipe and moving inside this casing of the pump and then moving through this delivery pipe it can have some friction associated with it okay so the total head against which the pump has to work is first of all to pull the water to suck the water that is suction head plus delivery head plus some friction is also there associated with the flow so pump has to work against the friction head as well as since over the exit of this delivery pipe the water is coming out with velocity v okay so the kinetic head over there would be v square by 2g so the total amount of head against which the pump has to work is the suction head 
plus delivery head plus whatever friction head associated with the centrifugal pump is plus the kinetic head with which the water is ultimately coming out from this exit of delivery pipe so hope you would have understood the working principle of centrifugal pump as well as the concept of static head and manometric head to know more about the different kinds of efficiencies of centrifugal pump those are the manometric efficiency mechanical efficiency and overall efficiency you must watch my next lecture which is dedicated to those topics thank you